professional painting tips to help you become a better painter. Coming right up. And I think it's because it's messy. But if you follow these steps, painting can be a lot of fun. You become a much better painter and that'll make you feel a lot better about your painting project. Hey, it's always important to tape the baseboards off. You apply your paint. You don't have to be as careful. You don't have to draw that straight line. Now where that really helps is when you go do your second coat, it's just so much quicker than trying to run that line again. Now you don't want to get a ton of paint on that tape. I'm still trying to run that edge, but just a little bit will get on the tape and that's okay. The tape okay. I like to use is the Sharp Lines Multi-Surface, number 2093, and that is Scotch Blue 2093. About three quarters of an inch to an inch wide when you're taping off baseboard and casing. Of course, your cutting brush is very, very important. You want one with an angle on it. This is a Purdy Clear Cut Elite Ultra Stiff. That's a pretty nice little brush right there. And I usually use a two inch to cut in around the ceiling and the baseboard. Just have you a little two and a half quart bucket. You don't want to have too much paint in there because whenever you dip your brush in, you want to be able to hit the bottom and come back up and not have paint all the way up on your handle. Usually about an inch, inch and a half worth of paint in there. Now what's important is when you go down and you dip it, you dip it, you bring it up and you tap it on both sides. Tap, 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 just like that. So, and then you apply your paint. And that way there, you're not getting too much paint on there, but there's enough that you can do a pretty significant area each time. It's always a good idea to have a pad, especially if you're working over hardwood floors. Put a pad down to help save your knees. pocket hanging out. Well, if you see something on your paint, you can reach over, take it off the wall, put it on the rag, and you're not getting it all over your hands, and you're not getting it all over your clothes. So I always have a rag hanging out, and actually I'll have two on both sides. That'll really help you stay nice and neat, and that's really important when it comes to painting, is you don't get paint all over your brush handle, all over your hands, your face, everywhere else. Try to stay as neat as possible, and you'll enjoy painting so much better. Hey, I do appreciate you coming to the channel. Hit that subscribe button. Smash it down, please. That helps me put out videos like this that'll help you and so many other people. Okay, you always want to have a little putty knife this in your back pocket and as you're painting you'll see little things like this right here will show up and you just take your putty knife and you just scrape it off that's from the previous painter probably had something in his paint okay what you want to remember is to wash your brush out at least once an hour to make sure it stays looking good. And what that'll do is that'll keep paint from getting down inside here and starting to dry, which is gonna cause a real problem and tear your brush out. Anytime I wash brushes out or I use caulking, anything like that, that's when I wear these gloves. And they're pretty nice. I got these at O'Reilly's Auto Parts. And for 50 pairs, they're like $25, but they're pretty good. They fit pretty tight and you can caulk in them, and they keep the chemicals off your hand and keep everything nice and neat. And that's really important. These are all tips that are gonna help you become a better painter. Now, when you go to pour your paint, a lot of people make a mess. When you go to pour your paint out, it's 
Very important, always have your brush in your hand ready to go. Dump the bucket in, bring it back out. Your brush is right there ready to catch those drips. You're gonna dump your paint in, you're gonna put your gallon back down, and before you scramble and try to find your brush, the runs have already went down and got under drop cloth. Hopefully you have a drop cloth down, always have a drop cloth down. But if you didn't, now it's on your floor. Now you got a real problem. I usually take it with my right hand and my brush is always in my hand. Remember, don't pour too much. Bring it up, set it down. Your brush is in your hand, ready to go. And get that paint off there. Little tips like that will keep you from making a mess. Always put your lid back on, no matter what. Put your lid back on it back on really good. Now, when you're finished painting, you have some left in your container. You just reverse the process. You take your containers, and this is why I like these small containers like this, because I can get my hand on the bottom and they're easy to control. A bigger bucket's a little bit harder to control. But I'll just dump it in, scrape my paint off. It's on the inside. Take my brush, take it off, check my container rim, make sure none is on there. Clean out the little gutter around the paint can edge. Put your lid back on. Always put your lid back on. And what I'm doing is I'm going through there and I'm knocking any little imperfections that are on the walls. You just want to make sure that there's nothing on the wall. That this wall is as smooth as can be. When I get done, I'll take my hand and actually go up and down it like this. If I feel something, it's going to show up in the paint. Especially if I'm using a dark color paint like this. The darker the paint, the more it's going to show everything. Even something tiny, I'll just take it scrape it off. This is dry dex spackling. I like this because one, it goes on pink. When it's dry, it turns white. So it's very easy to tell whenever it's dry, you can sand it off and it's ready to paint. And I'll use a little putty knife like this. So anytime you find a hole, you want to make sure that you sand the hole, punch it in just a little bit so it's not sticking out of the wall, it's protruding in. You take your dry dex, take a little bit of it, put it on there, let it dry, sand it off. Don't put too much. The more you put on there, the more it sticks away from the wall, the more you got to sand. Works pretty good. Go ahead and just give these one more a little coat like that. Works pretty good. And once that turns white, it'll be completely dry. I'll sand it off and I'll be ready to roll. Okay, I'm getting ready to roll the walls. Now what's important first of all is that you want to get a good roller cover. You have to get a good roller cover. I use a 9 inch purdy white dove. And what's important is this 3 8 nap. Buy a good roller cover. If you get a cheap roller cover, you're going to cover this wall full of lint. When it dries, you're going to see everything. You use top quality equipment, whether it's your painting brush, whether it's your roller covers, whether it's the paint that you use. Make sure it is top quality. The tool I'm going to use to roll this wall, Mr. Longarm, and it's pretty nice because it's adjustable. This is as small as it gets, which is perfect for tight corners, hallways. Then if I need it, I can reach this out. It extends out, and that way if I've got a ceiling that's a little bit taller, I can reach it with no problem. So I like it. It's been a pretty good tool. White Dove 3 8 roller cover. Now, anytime you take it out, it's a brand new one. Always kind of rub it off just a little bit. And make sure there, there is no loose lint. Very good about not leaving any lint at all, but the first application, wipe it off a little bit. It goes on your extension arm. Now that is ready to go brand new roller. Whenever I get the paint on it, probably end up doing maybe about a foot by foot until the roller gets saturated. Once it gets saturated, I'll eventually do about a four by three section and it's just like pixels on digital. It'll be, I'll do a section, a section, 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 and I'm constantly going over the overlapping lines and making sure they all blend in just right. about all you can do with that first row. Eventually the roller will soak up more paint.
that's how you roll. I'll just continue to do this wall and go all the way around. Here's something that's pretty important. You want to go ahead and use jumbo size, a little extra large paint tray. A lot of them are a lot smaller, but you can see when I put this roller in here, it gives me room sideways. I can put plenty of paint inside there. That'll almost hold a whole gallon of paint. So that's real important. And also at the same time, Go ahead and get you some good drop cloths. These cover grips, safety grips, are really nice. I almost use them exclusively. They have the rubber tips on the bottom and it'll keep you from slipping on the floors, hardwood floors, tile floors. Okay, one of the hardest things to do sometimes pour the remaining paint that's in your tray back into the can. Be very careful because you can make a giant mess doing that. Paintbrush in your hand. What I do is I just basically balance it on the rim and Tilt it in, and then work the sides in with my brush. This is where it helps to have this larger pan, paint pan too. And then you gotta kinda watch the edge right here because it will wanna drip on you a little bit right here. So make sure whenever you're done that you put your pan back down on your drop cloth because you probably will have a drip or two come off that edge right there. I'm not a big fan of these plastic lids that they have these days. I like the metal lids a lot better. You want to pull your tape off slowly at an angle. Okay, if you just follow along with those simple tips right there, it's going to make you a much better painter and you're going to enjoy yourself a lot more without all the mess, without all the hassle. Buy you a gallon of paint, get you a good paintbrush, good rollers, and give it a shot. Just go slow, be as neat as you possibly can, and everything's gonna work out okay. You can see, it's beautiful. Really can make a difference in a room. Thank you for coming to the channel. I appreciate it. LAF, Space Film Fest. That's capital LAF, Space film fest. Okay, well I'm going to give this a second coat. Remember, it almost always takes two coats in order for it to look right. Even if the gallon of paint says it's a one coat coverage, go ahead and give it two coats. Always looks better with two coats. And I'll be talking to you on the next video.